Hey, welcome back everybody. This video we are going to talk about some of the important methods on the integer object as well as possibly some methods on the double object as well. Before we dive in though, you definitely need to check out our sponsor, Pramp. So if you've been developing but you still need some experience with data structures and algorithms, I would definitely check out Pramp. Basically what Pramp does is it puts you with another individual and you do mock interviews with data structures, algorithms, questions. But not just that, they also have stuff in data science, system design, front end, and more. The main benefit of this is that you get put on the spot to see if you really know what you're talking about and you get rated on your interviewing skills. The feedback from these other individuals you can ultimately use to help improve your interviewing experience and start interviewing at companies like Google, Facebook, and Twitter. And more, of course. So please don't be that person who's in the situation where you've been studying development but you just can't seem to land a job. Definitely go check out Pramp. They'll help you and it'll be worth the time and the investment, which pff, there's basically no investment because it's free. So why wouldn't you give it a try, right? So with that, let's jump in. Gotta go get my jump rope. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so what we're gonna be talking about are some methods. Methods, if you remember, do something. So we can use the integer class and inside of this class, there are some methods we can use, which are shown right here. Now, the important thing to realize is that these are static methods. So that means we can call them directly. We could get this max method, for example. And in here, we can pass in a value and another value. And these might be variables. You might not know the values ahead of time, because obviously in this situation, we can tell you that, hey, 20 is going to be larger. <laughs> but you might have it to where it's like this. And you get this x from input, and then you have y and you get this y from input we could say x and y so this is a static method meaning we call it directly on this integer class we don't have to create an instance of this class if it wasn't a static method we would have to do something like this and then give it a value like so and then you would go in here and say my int dot whatever so this technique is an instance method this technique is a static method we run it and we get the value 20. So you can use max to give you the bigger of the two numbers. Another important one is the compare method. So you can go in here and type compare. And you can see that it takes two arguments because one would be assigned to the parameter x and another would be assigned to the parameter y. And the return is an int. The integer that it returns has three possibilities. The first is that is it's zero. If that's the case, they're equal. If it's less than zero, then x is smaller. And if it's greater than zero, then x is larger. So for example, if we go in here and we say x and y, and let's say we just want to output this value, like so, we run this, and we get the value negative 1. So that's telling me because the output is less than 0, that x is smaller. So this compare method is a little bit more dynamic than this max method. You could use the max method if it works, but the compare method could be used for more scenarios. Later on the road, once you learn about if statements, you can go in here and throw this inside of an if statement and branch depending on if they're equal, one's greater than the other, or one's smaller than the other. So what else do I need to know? Well, an important one to know is if you scroll down here, honestly, there's a ton in here that you should probably just go through and look through because I'm not gonna go through all of these. One I'm going to talk about though is this value of, and then we're also going to talk about this parse int. So what these two methods are for is taking a string value and converting it to an integer value. So let's say we have some string and we pass in that value right here. And now let's output that. These should both print the same thing. Oops, I got an error. We have to capitalize the string because it's a class and that class is capitalized and we need to make this a string. All right, let's run this. So they both print the value 300. So then what is the difference between these? Well, you can actually see if you look at the description of the methods. So this value of, you can see that it returns an integer, capital I, the full word. Whereas the, the parse, this returns an int lowercase i, not the full word. So if you guys remember, the difference between those is that one is an object and one is a primitive. So that means if we wanted to get rid of these outputs here, and we wanted to store these values, what we would store them in would be different. So in this scenario, we could store this inside of an integer, like so. But if we wanted to store this one, we would store that inside of an int. So if you're in this scenario where you need to convert a string to an integer, it depends on what you're trying to do. Are you trying to work with primitives or are you trying to work with objects? I would say most of the time you're going to be doing this one, but there may be situations when you need it as an object. Double has some similar methods, 
So we can look at some of those real quick. Double dot is finite, for example. These are methods that can test a value to see if it is a finite number or if it is infinite. I think we talked about this briefly as well as is not a number. There's a similar method to get the max value and the minimum value. There's a parse double just like there's a parse int. And there's a value of just like there's a value of for integers. So you can see there's a lot of similarities between the methods. The main difference is that we're going to be getting a double value rather than an integer. So hopefully after going through this, you have a pretty good understanding how to use some of the common methods with integers as well as doubles. It should be fairly similar throughout the different numeric data types. So now that you understand the integers, it shouldn't be too hard to pick it up for the doubles and the other ones as well. So that's all I got for you guys on numeric methods. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Please be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this series. And as always, don't forget to check out the description for a link to the Java Crash Course, the blog, and our amazing sponsor. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one.